Hello right bags, it's Jade, welcome to a video today taking a look at all 11 new variants or brand new creatures added as part of the Into the Wood update. This is from the PTS, it's had a few revisions now so some things have changed but I'm also going to show you where to find them in case you haven't got the parts on the resource scanner and a few little tips. I am going to be using cheats, look out for the legitimate guides individually on all of these coming very soon but let's go. Starting off with Roly Polies, these are now the proper versions, not the sickly kind, and you pretty much find them on the steps up towards the shed area. Here's a picture of the map, this is where you're going to find them, the little red dot in the north of me, that's going to be one location, and pretty much all around this science point here on the right hand side to the east of me, again that's another location. Obviously once you've got some of these parts you'll be able to use the scanner and find them but there's a few little issues with this. If you try scanning sickly roly poly parts it won't bring up any roly polies, not even the sickly versions to the south. They might correct this by the time the update goes live properly for everyone but they might not, they might want you to use the obviously proper roly poly parts. Now the new roly polies have pretty much got about two and a half extra chunks worth of health compared to the regular sick ones. Well I guess these are the regular ones and the sick ones are just minor. So yeah, they're more tanky. They don't really have any new moves, they'll pretty much do exactly the same thing as the sickly ones, but they are definitely going to hit just a little bit more harder and yeah, they've definitely got a lot more health. So even if you do go ahead and kill some sickly roly polies or you've got some of the parts laying around, you won't be able to use them to scan for the new ones. In fact, sickly roly polies no longer drop any of the roly poly shells. You only get them by going ahead and killing the normal roly polies. I went and killed every single sickly roly poly and it only dropped some of the brand new gloop and some of the roly poly parts, but not the shells. And you need the shells to make some of the roly poly armor. So as soon as you get a roly poly shell, make sure you go and scan it at the actual resource analyzer and then go for the actual scanner and this will show you where some of the normal roly polies are. If you want to find sickly ones, you now need to go and scan the roly poly parts and this will show up every single kind of roly poly. But if you go ahead and scan just the shell, you'll only bring up the normal roly polies and not the sickly ones. I think that's hopefully clear enough. It doesn't seem perfect, I expect this to change somehow in the next couple of weeks. Alright, time to mess with the ladybirds, the ladybug variations, and that's what I've always called ladybugs or ladybirds, it's always just been ladybirds in the UK. Anyhow, they've got much more tankier health, and they seem to have, again, another harder bite to them. There's two BMXs in the backyard now, and this is where you're going to find some of them, by the one that's laying down on the floor that leads up to the shed. There's no unique drops here, but you do get pretty much guaranteed chance of always getting a ladybug head. Whereas the regular ladybugs, you don't always get one of the heads. So these guys do kind of live in the same sort of vicinity as the roly podies. You may find them a couple more towards the steps that lead directly to the shed, and then just to the right hand side on the top flower bed, just above the pond. If you see any other red boxes saying ladybug parts, they're going to be ladybugs and not actual ladybirds. So far, the ladybirds all live distinctly just above the pebbles up towards the north. Also, a little FYI, sometimes you will get confused with infected ones. You can see there's a couple splotches just here, right where the pond is, and that's also another spawn point for infected, if, of course, you've turned off the haze canister. And like a lot of other bug parts, as always, you've been able to find them in some of the spider nests, so that's why you can see some towards the northwest. And just show you one more time, on the actual pebbles above the pond, this is a location, but the ones below, that's going to be infected. And you will usually find one underneath the actual decking towards the shed as well, just roaming around as well. Next up we've got the green shield bug, and I've been calling this a mini boss, in fact I've been calling it the stink bug mini boss, because it does drop something unique, it drops its own super stink bag, which you're going to be needing to make super gas arrows. Now sometimes you can find it on top of the deck, it may be a bit of a spawn issue at the moment, just below the shed, near these cutters that lead up to this pot. But 9 times out of 10 it's going to be actually below the deck, in this little crack you'll find you can jump over the weed bag as well to where the cap gun is, and here you go, here is the green shield dude. He's a massive health pull, but he's pretty easy to take down. He'll do pretty much the same attacks as a regular stink bug, but I feel like his gas didn't maybe last as long, maybe I'm just getting it twisted, but yeah, he does get stuck on quite a few bits of the terrain down here as well. Once you've defeated him, he should obviously drop the super stink bug stuff, and I guess that's maybe the limit. He may obviously come back after a few days, I presume so, and then you'll be able to stock up on some more. 
I got three super stink sacks and that means I can make at least nine of the super gas arrows. Each stink bag will give you three super gas arrows. They probably do another maybe two and a half big squares of health more than the regular gas arrow. So definitely really good for taking on some maybe harder enemies. Next up, we've probably got one of the hardest ones to find, and that, of course, is the Scarabs. Because you need their shells if you want to upgrade your weapons to their max capabilities, there's only maybe three or four spawns of these guys, again, all in the brand new areas. The twinkling shell you can see is popping up. There's a few on the stone steps, and it should be a spawn just where you fought the green shield uh, stink bug. These guys really are no fun to find. You find them often glitching into the pebbles and the scenery, and sometimes they can even burrow onto the ground. I swear I saw one disappear underneath the deck where I was fighting the green shield bug earlier. They don't seem to be lured out by any lure traps either, so I'm hoping that can be changed in the future, because otherwise it's going to be really hard upgrading your weapons. And because they move so quickly, you have to really be close to where they normally spawn if you've got any chance of trying to find them super quick. So what you can really do is get apart as quick as you can by finding one in the flower beds pretty much on the way up to the sheds and making sure you've unlocked all of the science stations nearby so you can get the best chance of scanning them quickly. As long as you don't run into any other creatures, you can keep up with them. In fact, you can outrun them. You don't need any special shoes or anything like the mite shoes to go quicker. You should be able to keep up with them. Next up, we've got the ladybug larvae, and you'll find these all over again, the same areas. It's going to be in the barbecue zone. You'll find a whole bunch of them, and you'll find a load of them in the trenches that lead up to the wood pile. Now, when you kill them, they drop acid as well as lava spikes. So you can need to go and scan lava spikes if you really want to find them. And again, the same thing applies as the same as the ladybird variants. You need to look above the steps, the flower beds that go up to the shed, ping some larvae spikes and you should be able to find some in there. Any that ping below it will just be the infected larvae or normal larvae. They do seem to have a few extra moves compared to the regular larvae or maybe they've just improved them as well but we haven't really noticed. They seem to move and shoot about a little bit quicker. You will also get some bug goop from them as well as the normal stuff like the acid glands. Another reason why you don't look for acid glands because it gets confused with the soldier ants and the termite soldiers. They all drop acid glands as well. Or maybe the regular termites drop acid glands. And speaking of termites, then of course you're going to find them near the wood pile. They do come and explore just outside the wood pile, especially some of the normal ones. But you do get the soldier ants as well or the worker ones following them as well. So they're pretty easy to take down when they're singular like this. So when they group up, there's loads of them you've got to worry. The soldiers drop the chumpers, the termite chumpers, and you're going to need them if you want to actually make the termite axe, I do believe, and maybe some of the other items. And like I said, the regular termites, they seemingly just drop acid. So for this next one, it is the termite king. I'm going to show you exactly how to get to him as quickly and easily as possible. Go up the wooden ramp to the first termite tunnel and follow it round. It should pretty much do a U-bend and come back out to the outside eventually. Then just clamber up if you can without falling to that post that I just dropped from. We're going to get on top of that hole that you can see that you can't really get on top of any other way. Unless you do have a dandelion puff, then this might become a little bit easier. But yeah, try and get above it and then you simply just need to drop down and you can get into this tunnel. And as long as you go directly straight forward, don't go left or right anywhere else, you'll eventually come to the entrance to the King Termite. Of course, the other tunnels do have some goodies. You'll find some molars, milk molars in there, and maybe a scab if you go to the left-hand side, I do believe, and some of the other little tunnels lead up to the very top where the tarpaulin is. But you need to break through here with a tier three termite axe, and then you'll be able to go and take on the king himself, and also get hold of a gold molar and another burgle chip. Top tip, jump on top of some of the splinters and only attack some in the top right and that will stop the actual rest of the mites following you and that way you can go and take on the king a little bit easier. Although there will be some more termites, regular ones and soldier ones down below. If you're really lucky he'll get stuck and you can pretty much just wait on him and take care of his minions no problem. I pretty much led him all the way to the entrance but he won't actually follow you outside of the entrance, he'll retreat just so I could try and get a better camera shot but he wasn't playing ball. He's got a formidable amount of health, he's very tanky, but I wouldn't say it's the most dangerous creature compared to some of the others. I know I'm doing this with cheats, but it's only a showcase. I will do proper guides on how to do this legit, but it's definitely going to take a lot more preparation and definitely getting some upgrades to your tools and weapons. 
He'll drop some termite chompers, the termite king carapace, a bunch of globlets, and obviously some termite body parts too, which you're absolutely going to need if you want to make the termite armor. Next up, we've got the completely brand new Black Ox Beetle. This can be found on the western side of the pebble flower bed, just before you get to the kind of wood piles and just pretty much over past the barbecue. They're pretty formidable. They've got a pretty tanky health. I would say actually they're pretty much on par with possibly even the Green Shield Beetle. But the devs did say this was the tankiest creature in Grounded now. So, yes, it resides here. It's pretty formidable. It charges up at you and it will also do some normal attacks too. And contrary to what a few comments were saying that it throws big balls of poo at you, no, it doesn't. It throws actual boulders at you that lifts from the ground. I think at the early stage of this on the PTS, it was just like a dust ball. So I can imagine why some people thought it was poo. And obviously I know about dung beetles that obviously push their own poo along, but that's not the case with this one. The reward for taking this guy out, of course, is the best new hammer in the game, the Black Ox Hammer, and it is truly OP. If you can get that as well as maybe this sword, there is no stopping you. So just above the pebble line, like I said, past the burnt ash zone. In terms of spawns, there is actually a couple of spawn points. It's all in this area here, so you should get at least two spawn, spawn points within each cycle. Now the dust mites are pretty annoying. They're pretty formidable. When they're all grouped up like this, it's not going to be long before you're running out of stamina to really take them on. What you're really looking here for is the lint blobs though, because you need lint now to craft so many of the tier 3 items. But of course the dust mites do drop something valuable as well, and that of course is dust mite fuzz, which you're going to be using for your splinter arrows. It seems like the blobs they fire kind of stop you from doing as much attack damage or reduce your stamina so you've got to be really careful and they do seem to be bugged out a little bit underneath the black mat it's surrounded by a black ants as well it's a pretty dangerous area i would hope given it's right in front of the shed and you can see the shed from pretty much anywhere in the garden you don't actually need me to point out exactly where it is on the map and as of right now, it's the only place that you can find the dust mites. I thought there might be some in front of the house, maybe there could be a map there or other places, but nope, only in this location. And last but not least, of course, the infected wolf spider. I've already shown you guys how to activate this or find him. Pretty much if you've stopped the haze from spreading, you should find him spawn after a couple of days underneath the oak tree. I think there's been some suggestions that the wolf spiders might actually spawn or have a chance of spawning anywhere where the wolf spiders do spawn that is close to some of the infection that spreads throughout the game but i haven't seen that confirmed yet so i'm going to do some more testing but as of right now on the pts this is where you find them so a few days afterwards should be okay and you don't need to start a brand new game that was part of it that's been changed in the latest update so it should spawn after a few days Killing it's going to give you a jackpot of wolf spider ingredients, 3 spider fangs, spider chunks, 5 spider venom and 10 fungal growth when I killed this one. It's got the same tax as a regular wolf spider but in addition to poison damage it'll also do acid damage when it pounces on you so you've got to be super super careful as it can hit you from pretty distance. So there we go, that's all 11 new additions so far in the update. If anything changes, I will add something on and re-upload another video, maybe some more details about what you can get. But that's mostly the resources you get from them, what kind of benefits, where to find them, and how to use the resource scanner for them. Look out for proper legitimate guides on how to take care of these guys, all individually coming in the next few days, and I'll see you at bags later.